it's kind of that dualism or the compartmentalization. It's like existing in two realities at the same time where it's like, I know that things are going the way they're going. Everything is pointing in that direction. But what if we still have time and I still need insurance and I still need all these things to prepare myself for it for when I retire or something, right? And and, and every sign right. is pointing towards that not being a problem. Like, we're not going to be worried about that. That's not going to be a part of the <laughs> equation any longer. So we need to kind of have a more realistic and grounded view. And, and you know, you talk about your privileged um, background, and, and, and I think privilege is like this... Um, thing that I've had a, a few different conversations with people that have talked about this. I remember a conversation with a a writer named um, Ted Hargrave or Tad Hargrave. Sorry for saying your name wrong, Tad. <laughs> Tad Hargrave. <laughs> um, he uh, he was talking about how privilege, like when this country, when cause he's from Canada and I hear him, the, we're here in yeah. the United States, but you know, very similar histories. You know, people think Canada is this like, oh, it's like America, but, you know, nicer. And I'm like, well, they still have their genocidal <laughs> history and their, right. their, you know, prime minister kind of reminds me of a more liberal um, exemplar of liberalism as hey, Obama, but he's just much more uh, two-faced in the way that he deals with, like, oil production, for instance, and how he's actually treated the indigenous communities of, of Canada. I mean, it's, it's obviously not an ideal situation up there by any means. But something we discussed is this idea of whiteness and being... We're, we are we are labeled white because of our skin color and our ancestry. Of course, we're European, so we exist within a sphere of privilege. We we exist within a system that has been built um, to benefit us in certain ways that we don't always recognize. Um, and when you're talking about stepping away in some way uh, from the system as it is and recognizing your privilege, I mean, I want you to kind of uh, talk a little bit about how privilege maybe shields us or or hides mm. some of the underlying violence that pervades our culture right we we don't always see right where it is or what or what is really like making the world work for us right now but um yeah i just wanted you to maybe comment on that well it's great uh you know it's <sighs> I think I really first came across this idea that you just brought up about what we don't see from the Unabomber. I read the Unabomber's manifesto, uh, Ted Kaczynski's manifesto, and he talks about hidden relationships of the industrial model. And the hidden relationships are, you know, the things you don't see or hear or feel uh, about, you know, the things that show up on the shelves or the services that are you know, provided for you to choose from in your life. They, they just kind of happen. And living in community on a smaller scale, I live with about 12 people on about 20 acres. And the difference is, you know, we're still part of the industrial model and we, we go to stores and you know, we try and grow food and blah, blah, blah. But we know when each other are suffering. You know, if somebody is during the winter, their house isn't keeping them warm. You see that suffering up close. And so there's nothing hidden about it. And um, you can either just continue to watch that happen or you can, um, as a community member, uh, you know, rally the troops and do something about it. And that's often what has happened in the community I live in, as opposed to the neighborhood that I came from, where I didn't know the people that lived directly behind me. Uh, you know, a cinder wall basically separated us for 16 years. And I'm sure that household changed occupants several times, and I never knew who they were. I didn't know they were if they were suffering, if they were healthy. I didn't know what race they were, what gender they were. And I think that's the problem with the industrial model is we try and govern and support billions of people. And we have these nation states and you can't govern 350 million people. Clearly, we, you can. It's, it's a colossal. It's, it's a clusterfuck, as you know, <laughs> James, James Howard Kunstler would say. And so that is the key is is recognizing, you know, where you fall in that hierarchy. And I think when I talk to a lot of white folks, and particularly white men, they they have uh, this – they pull back and they have this reaction that they're somehow being um, threatened or they're you know being coerced into feeling guilty about their particular uh, set of circumstances. And what I try and point out is you know, it's not about really guilt. It's about realizing where you are and what that means and what that means to other people. And it really comes down to when people tell me – that they are suffering, 
and I, let's say I can't see it, it's not on my property. And, uh, you know, and they're, they're being, you know, they're, they're, their people are being killed or they're being person. I believe them because why wouldn't I? I they, you know, they expect I expect them to believe what I would say of my experience in, a, in, the, in my people. And so that's what I find funny is that most of the folks that I talk to where I have, you know, they, they, they turn into arguments is that they don't believe or they don't want to believe the, the experiences of other people. And if you just start to realize, you know, where does all this shit come from and who's paying the cost and who is suffering, human and non-human, you start to get an inkling of what's really happening here. So it's not about feeling bad for being white. It's about knowing what it means and what it means to the relationships you have with life on this planet. Um, and so that's really... Uh, when you start to go down that rabbit hole, you find that it's a predicament because can I really, you know, just because I quit my job, I live uh, very little money under the poverty line. I live in a yurt. I live in an intentional community. Um, can I really walk away from my privilege is the question. And I, I don't know the answer to that. I mean, I, I show up in, you know, Phoenix, Arizona here um, to do a house that I'm still a white guy. I'm still walking the street as a white man. Uh, the police still see me as a white guy. Um, women still probably are, you know, walking through dark parking lots and um, trying to get to their car because they're afraid of men. So my male privilege of not having to do that is still relevant. So I don't really know. That's the predicament is we've really gone down this avenue of this massive hierarchy. And somehow we think by just voting and passing policies and getting the right people in office and recycling and eating at, you know, Trader Joe's that um, we can somehow you know, get out of it. All it really does is make us feel better about it. And really what I'm doing on some level is really only making myself feel better about it. Me living in a tent in the middle of nowhere in New Mexico isn't going to change shit. But what it has done is it's kept my sanity and it's changed my lens to be more empathetic to the plight and situations of people and species that I'm not a part of. And, you know, that, if anything, um, has, has um, I think, been beneficial to the way I navigate the world.